Hey, this is Digital Bike Computing. Today we're going to be talking about what sort of uh, setup I've got at home. Uh, I work in IT, so I have a lot of equipment that is focused around the geek in me. Uh, you know, my IT setup, we're going to be covering some of the, the computer that I use, the equipment that I use, uh, the storage that I use, um, what sort of other things I've got. Uh, also looking at how I've got my home set up from a network perspective, how I've got things such as home automation stuff. So I'm using the, the Amazon Echo sorts of devices and a lot of smart plugs and lights and things like that. Uh, music throughout my house. So we're gonna be covering all of those elements as well, how I've got it all set up, how, how it all integrates together in my network. <laughs> So, let's start with our basic setup. Uh, I've just got a couple of uh, Lenovo screens. These are mounted to a monitor arm, which is mounted to the desk itself. To the left of that, just got another separate screen with its own monitor arm uh, mounted to the desk. So this is a single monitor arm, and this is a dual monitor arm, actually allowing me to have both screens uh, mounted there at once. Uh, MacBook Pro, uh, which has got a couple of USB-C connectors uh, running out to HDMI screens, which are these two right here. Next to that, we've got a Yeti microphone. Uh, I use this for recording, uh, for voice recording, for doing any sort of um, you know YouTube videos, when I'm doing video conference calls, things like that. Uh, the quality of one of these are awesome. This is just a standard USB connector uh, into the laptop. We've just got a couple of speakers here, uh, which are hooked up currently to my Echo Dot. We've got a uh, M-Box. Uh, this is used for uh, essentially recording of musical instruments, voice, things like that. That is just connected via a USB connection. I can plug a guitar into here. I can plug the output of a keyboard, things like that. This is a wireless Logitech keyboard and mouse, uh, which is hooked up to the little computer right here. So I can actually still control it. Um, as I said, that is the screen that is connected into that particular uh, laptop, Lenovo laptop that we had just there before. So I've got myself a little bookshelf right here with a number of different uh, devices that make up my uh, home lab slash home environment that I use for a number of different things. So right here I've got two uh, computers. So additionally to my MacBook Pro, which is my primary computer that is on my Wi-Fi network, uh, I've got a couple of additional two computers here. This is a Intel, NUC, uh, which is a very small form factor computer and also a Mac mini. Uh, these two devices are what's running uh, VMware ESXi, which is essentially some virtualization technology, which allows you to run multiple computers uh, onto the one device. So rather than this just running Windows 10 and this just running Mac OS, I've installed VMware's operating system, which is ESXi, and I've got a number of VMs or servers, and uh, you know there's Ubuntu servers, there's Windows servers, all running on both of these. Uh, I've got two of them, so that um, I've got redundancy. So I've got VMs sitting on here and on here, and I can move the VMs between those two servers uh, quite easily. I'll call them servers because they're acting uh, like servers. Uh, I've also got two for redundancy, so all of my servers that are running on here, my virtual servers that are running on here, if this thing was to die or have a power outage or something, they all automatically go and power on uh, on here. Uh, and that is using a technology called vCenter, which is uh, VMware's, um, another suite by VMware. Uh, but really the whole point of having these two in a small form factor uh, was uh, more for a space reason. I wanted something that was small and compact but it was still powerful enough to be able to run multiple servers inside. These are then connected to my primary storage unit. This is what's called a NAS, a network attached storage. Essentially, if I take this little cap off right here, these are four three terabyte hard drives. They're configured in what's called RAID groups. Uh, and this is really just a big storage unit that contains all of my data. So all of my data, all of my movies, all my documents, uh, the virtual machines which are running on these are all stored on this one unit right here. Uh, so rather than having multiple hard drives, multiple USB hard drives and thumb drives, which a lot of people have got maybe 10 of them sort of floating around different capacities, different sizes, containing multiple different things, I've got everything on this one device. So all of my photos, everything is all running on here. These three devices are all in the network. Uh, because these three are right next to these other devices, uh, they are all plugged in via ethernet. So ethernet is what I've chosen to, to run these into. Uh, it's a gigabit ethernet. This particular device has dual ethernet cables. So again, for redundancy, so I've got two of these uh, ethernet cables running into the back of the NAS 
uh, and then connect it into my switch. Uh, and then I've also got these two running from an ethernet cable connected into my switch as well. I've got my Cisco switch, this is a Cisco Meraki switch with a number of ethernet cables. These are running into the devices here, as well as a, uh, a spare cable that is running to the other side of my room. And that is also running into my core uh, wireless network. This has been hosted via a Apple AirPort Extreme, which itself has a number of ethernet ports on the back with additional devices. Uh, every room of my house has ethernet ports so that I can keep everything connected over ethernet if I need to as well. Out of the back of this, uh, so this is not my modem, this is just a Wi-Fi router. So this has a WAN port which is then connected into a port on my wall that runs into my garage and into my garage is where I have my actual internet coming out off the street. So I have fiber internet coming into the, into the house uh, that is connected to a, another uh, router. Uh, that is connected to uh, multiple devices and that is where my patch panel is that is then connected to all of my ports all across my house uh, from an ethernet port perspective. And then everything then runs into here which then connects into here and then all the devices are all connected. So half of my devices are running over ethernet. Uh, that includes other than this stuff, uh, other areas in my house where I've got my, my Xbox, my, my Nintendo consoles, things like that, uh, my televisions. Uh, some of them do not have Wi-Fi, some of them do, but I've chosen to run them over Ethernet as well. Uh, also a number of Apple TVs. Wi-Fi is then obviously feeding Wi-Fi around my house. This is a quite powerful unit that can do all of my house quite easily. Uh, and obviously connected to this are all of my smart devices. So my um, all of my Alexa suite of products, uh, my iPhones, my iPads, uh, some of my Apple TVs are also on here. Anything that is generally stationary and that is in a fixed location and is near an ethernet port, I will try to connect over ethernet. So all of this really acts as not only my lab where I can do some learning, some IT learning, because I do work in IT, I wanna keep up to date with current technologies. So running VMware on these, being able to build VMs, build Windows servers, build Linux, Ubuntu, CentOS boxes, uh, play around with things, build with technologies, build um, emulators like Cisco emulators, storage emulators, things like that, uh, really aids in my learning. But it also acts as, essentially, I've got like a, a small office environment running in my home. Now, it, it could be overkill, it probably is overkill, but I do have you know domain controllers, DNS, DHCP, I've got a firewall, I've got an NTP server, all these technologies are running in a home environment, more because I can and because I know how to set it all up. But um, you don't have to do all that, but that's just what I've chosen to do. And then all of my storage running from that one centralized location, uh, which is really, really helpful. So just above my NAS, so my NAS is just down here. Uh, just above it, I've got another NAS. This is currently not plugged in. And like the other one, it's also got four hard drive slots, uh, the same capacity as my other NAS. Uh, and the reason that I've got this is really just for backup purposes. What I want to ensure is that I've got a separate device that is uh, got all the same data as my other NAS. If I was to lose that, if I was to get burgled, if it was to burn down in a fire, if it was to die, short circuit, whatever it may be, um, I would be devastated. So what I've actually got is I've got myself a second NAS. I've got some software running on here and some software running on the other NAS uh, that is called R-Sync. And what that does is I've got that set up so that it essentially copies and duplicates all of my data from my production NAS, we'll call it a production NAS, over to my secondary backup NAS right here. And then what I do is I, I go and take this offsite. So I go and take this outside of my house so that it's secure. So if something was to happen in my house, I know that all of my data is still on here and is in a secure location outside of my home. Generally every two to three months, um, I'll bring this home uh, connect it back up to my network, uh, resync it, and then I take it back offsite again uh, where it's in a secure location. So just swinging back to here, I've also here got myself a uh, Amazon Echo. Uh, this is connected to speakers which are up in my uh, on my desk. Uh, and this obviously en enables me to be able to talk to my room, to play music, uh, to control my lights on and off. So let's just go through my range of smart products. Um, I am using primarily Amazon's uh, Echo Suite, uh, utilizing uh, the Alexa smart home. The other thing with my Wi-Fi uh, router, um, all of my smart home devices are talking to this. So all of my smart home devices connect essentially into my uh, Wi-Fi router, into my Apple Wi-Fi router. So that is all of my Echo devices, as well as my smart lights and my smart plugs, which are all Wi-Fi enabled. 
are all enabled and controlled via here and then controlled obviously by all of my Amazon suite of products. So first and foremost, enable Alexa around your house, uh, which includes a number of these Echo Dots. So we've got a few Echo Dots as well as a standard Echo. Uh, the Echo Dots themselves, a couple are just going to be set up as normal around the house, really just for hearing the audio, uh, hearing me speak and play some music and respond to some commands. Well, a number of the other Echo Dots will actually connect speakers to the back of each of these Echo Dots, better quality speakers. Uh, spread around the house to allow you to have better quality uh, music out of these devices. We've got these Wi-Fi power plugs. Uh, essentially, you just run a device into these and then you can enable on and off features through your um, Echo devices, through Amazon Alexa, and also turn them on and off by speaking. Here we got some uh, Wi-Fi enabled lights. You can also schedule these through the Amazon Alexa app, which is actually really helpful. So in the master bedroom, I've got one of these really fancy lights. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up one of those Wi-Fi power plugs. So standard floor light. Okay, we're gonna run one of these Wi-Fi lights into it. So kids lights, got a simple Wi-Fi plug that is connected into the wall. The other kids light, this particular one is an actual Wi-Fi globe, just so that we can adjust the brightness and the colors uh, we can change nice and easily. Here another Amazon Echo Dot connected to some uh, separate speakers. Uh, and this has actually got a splitter, the speakers, so that it's running into the uh, Echo Dot itself and also running into a mounted television as my output source for my audio. Some outdoor waterproof lights. These are all obviously cabled under, underground and they're running into a PowerPoint, which is powered by a Wi-Fi plug. So I can turn my lights on and off. They're also scheduled to turn on and off automatically uh, at particular times. Here we got some Wi-Fi enabled LED strips. So we've got strips that all run behind my desk here. Uh, and we've got a second one that runs behind my screens. Alexa, set the monitor lights to red. Okay. Alexa, turn the office lights off. Okay. So I hope you found that helpful. There's definitely a lot of stuff that we are that we cover today. Hopefully I gave you some tips and some ideas um, on what you could do at home. Uh, again, this is my setup. This is how I've customized it for myself. You may have a different uh, ideas on how you want to be setting things up. You may not want to be using Amazon Echo stuff. You could be using the, you know, the, the Siri stuff. You could be using Google stuff. Uh, you could be using different um, computers, uh, you know, more Windows focused, Linux focused, Mac focused whatever it may be, different sorts of hardware. I hope you found this helpful, and if you did, please uh, like my video, give me a thumbs up there, and as well as that, please subscribe to Digital Bike Computing, which is my channel, and click on that notification bell to be up to date as I release new videos. It helps me and it helps you, uh, because I get to release more content more frequently, and you get to know when that stuff comes out. But that is it for now, we'll see you next time, and all the best.